Okay, I have gone ahead and I've cut out all my pieces I need to do the Magdalena bag. I'll show you what we do need. You are going to need a number five zipper tape. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this rainbowy one just yet. This is from Blue Kella. It's a new um, type of uh, zipper tape she's offering. But I think I'm going to use that because it's a black and white bag and I think that'll just give it a little, little bit of color. Okay, hardware wise, you need your nameplate or handmade tag. Two swivel cloths, a slider. I'm just using the one inch slide. I've decided to go with the one inch straps. Two D rings for the crossbody strap. Three number five zipper pulls. You could do a number three zipper pull for the lining of the bag, but I'm just gonna keep with the number five zipper. And it's a double zipper pull on top. And rivets that is it it's very minimal hardware for this bag which is awesome now for pieces this is for the front pocket panel you'll need two pocket pieces for the front and lining pieces all backed with woven fuse i'm using black woven well this isn't this is fashion fuse so this is medium uh woven interfacing um I have learned it actually isn't too, too bad, but this was a more vibrant white. I am all out of white uh, woven interfacing, so I use the black. So it's kind of given it this antique kind of color to it, which is okay because it's Elvis and he's kind of antique. So I'm going with it, <laughs> but don't use the black on a light colored one. Lesson learned. So yes, those are for the front pocket panel. For your main body pieces, you need two lining backed with uh, woven interfacing. Your two main panels backed with Decavel Heavy. I have also done this instead of Decavel Heavy, I have used foam. On my first one, I used foam, um, but I'm trying it with the Decavel Heavy this way to uh, follow the pattern this time. Just make sure you keep it out of the seam allowance, especially if you're on a domestic machine. And it makes it easier for when we do the binding if it's not so thick uh, for covering those edges. Okay, you will need for your zipper panel two exterior, and I haven't lined them with anything, and two lining for your zipper panel lined with uh, woven interfacing on the back. Two handle overlay pieces in vinyl. They aren't interfaced as well. Okay. Two pocket pieces. One is for your zipper pocket and one is going to be for the slip pocket, both backed with woven interfacing. It's two strap connectors with a little bit of uh, Decaville light in the back. two short handles, your gusset, uh, one in the exterior and one in the lining. The gusset exterior, it has Decaville light outside of the seam allowances and the lining has a woven interfacing. Uh, this is my crossbody strap. Uh, my fabric was not long enough to do it all in one piece, so I'm going to have to um, sew the pieces together on a bias and then once that's done I am going to um, back it with a woven interfacing and then this isn't in the pattern but I'm going to be uh, be doing it today uh, for my interior zipper pocket I am using a vinyl overlay so that's all the pieces it's actually very minimal pieces for this bag it's a real fun sew Oh, you will also need binding if you can get extra wide binding it works the best trust me so i just buy mine i have it in the other room i have to go grab it but uh yeah i just could buy mine from fabric land or the fabric store get i always get the double wide bias binding all right i'm gonna go ahead and i am going to sew together my straps i am not going to show that in this video 
If you want to see how these straps are done, you can check out my Erica Bowler bag tutorial. It's done the exact same way. You are going to be surprised how much this bag goes together the same as the Erica Bowler bag. It's the same things, just a different shape. So I'm going to go and do my straps and then we will come back and we will start uh, forming the pockets. All right. So I went ahead and I did the first panel. This is what we're going to be achieving in this next step. So I'm going to show you how we got to this point. So grab your other panel and what we want to do is, now you're going to see my notches here. I thought it would have made sense to mark my centers, but don't do that just yet because your centers do end up being off when you do that. So um, if you follow along in the pattern, it kind of shows you how to find the centers as we go. Okay, so you want to take your finished strap so you can see how I I just went through how we did it on uh, the Erica Bowler bag. Again, if you are not sure how we did this, please go and reference that video. It's done the exact same way. Just make sure that your measurements, um, you follow the measurements that are in this one because it's a slightly smaller bag. Okay, so what we want to do is first off, on the wrong side of your strap, we want to put five and a half inches a double-sided tape on each end. And the reason we do five and a half is just to keep it um, in that seam allowance so the tape will not show later on, like so. Okay, where are my... Okay. Now what we wanna do is you wanna find a place where the center of this is somewhat straight and we are going to measure two inches up. Like so, and this is gonna help us find our center. Can we see this? Maybe if I move my camera over here a little more. Sorry for the moving camera. Okay, so two inches up from the bottom center part or where the, you think the center is gonna be, we're creating that center now and draw that. Now this line should be about eight inches long, which it is. So now we wanna mark that center line. So we're gonna put this to four inches on the edge and go here. And I'm actually gonna draw that right down. That's gonna give me my center of the bag there. And then make sure this is four as well. One, two, three, four. So there's our center. While I have this here, I am going to just take my scissors and just put a little snip there so I know that's my center. Or you can mark it on the opposite side. That might be easier, actually. I'm going to mark it over here because it'll just help when we're putting the bag all together. Okay, so now we have our center mark and now we want to put our straps on and we want them to be straight. So you're going to line six inches, your six inch mark on your ruler with the line. And on that center line, it's going to be at your two inch mark. So we got two, this is the center here. We got two inches going in here. And you're going to take your first part of your strap, remove the tape. Make sure your ruler's nice and straight and line that up. Now make sure, because we've cut these on an angle, you want the long ang the long part of the strap to go against the line there like this. And that's just to reduce some of the bulk in here. That's slanted. So you'll see that it'll go right up to our six inch mark that we made on our straps as well. And press that down with the tape. And we wanna do the same on the other side, line it up at that six inch mark and the two inch mark from the center. Move your tape. Make sure your handle's not twisted and line it up against that ruler. Now these should be four inches apart now. If you put the ruler down here, just make sure it's nice and straight. This can move over just a little bit more like so so four and four so I am good and straight there so what I'm going to do so you can see how we have um I said I did one inch uh 
straps. So these are my three eighths of an inch seam allowance that I chose to do. Now I'm going to go with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance and go up the side here. I'm going to pivot at this line, go across and down the other side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and same with on the other side of the bag. So go ahead and do that. Do not stitch up past this line. Again, you're going to pivot on that six inch line and go back down the other side. All right, so that's done. You can see how the stitching is nice and pretty. I really love the decorative stitching of this. Also at this point, if you're going to be putting in your uh, rivets, this is where you want to do it just above that six inch line and just punch your hole in between these if you can. You don't want to break the stitches. So that's all done with that. So now what I'm also going to do, this isn't in the pattern, but I kind of want to mark that center while I still have this line for later on. So I am actually going to line up my ruler along that center line and nice and straight along that two inch line that we drew. Make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm just going to take my Chaco and I'm going to mark that center point there. Make sure that's about right. So I get about one and three quarters. Just want to make sure it's centered. and it's that three. So I'm just lining it up with those and I can see that's really nice and center there. And I'm just gonna take my pen and mark on the back where that center is. That's just gonna help make it so our bag doesn't end up being topsy-turvy later when we go to attach it to the zipper. So it just helps to have those centers marked already. I'm actually gonna put a little teeny tiny clip in there as well. So there we go. So I had attempted to mark my centers before, but I don't think they would have worked out so centered. So that is how I do it there. So I have it marked on the back side, my center there. Okay, and the next step is putting the overlay over top of this. So you're going to grab your overlay and take your double sided tape. Now, this is where you can keep the double sided tape kind of out of, we're going to be top stitching it. So just kind of keep it out of where your needle is going to be. My machine doesn't have a problem. It doesn't gum up the needle too badly, but uh, I know some people have issues with it. Knock on wood, that is. I hope it never ever happens that I have an issue with it. Okay. Take that tape off. Like I said, just want to double check. Did I do it the right way? Backing from your handle over. Okay. So we want to take this and where that six inch mark was, which is our stitching across here, we want to go four inches down from that. Make sure it's nice and straight. And we're going to put our overlay. Actually, I got it wrong here. I'm actually just going to eyeball it. I can see how it goes on. You're going to match the edges here like this. Now this piece won't be seen if this is going to be hidden by the pocket. This is just to hide the raw edges of the handles like that. So now you're going to take this to your machine and you're going to top stitch along here. I like to go back over this twice, like go this way, back stitch and then back over again, just over each of the handles to secure them in place a little better down here all the way around and then we'll come back with the next. Okay, so I went ahead and I completed the back panel. So this is what we are going to be doing in this step. As you can see, I hope and I believe that I have this pocket centered on here pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'll show you where we got to this step. So what you wanna do is take your pocket main panel and the lining panel, put the right sides together, and then clip this top section here, just the top curvy part. Yep. I 
obviously didn't cut it very even, but that's okay. We can fix that later. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go along this top curved part with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then come back and do the next step. Okay, so I have done that and now I'm gonna take my picking shears. If you don't have picking shears, you can go ahead and just put little notches along this curved edge. It's just to help give it a nice shape when we go to press it out. So go about a quarter inch or so away from the line we just stitched. So, and then what you're going to do is you're going to turn the wrong sides together. You're going to roll that seam in between your fingers and get a nice curve like that. Then you're going to take it to your iron and press this all down and then back to the sewing machine and top stitch it along this curved edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I have gone ahead and done that. What I also did was just folded this in half just to find where that center mark was on this panel because now we're going to baste it to the main panel. So where I have my little clip there for my center, I don't know if you can see right there, just a little snip. I'm going to line it up with that center mark that I did previously on the bottom here first. So I got that's that red mark there. And I'm going to pick that first. And this is the hardest part about a circle because it's really hard to tell if it's straight, but you truly want it to be. Now, when you do this, you're going to notice that it's a little bit longer here and you want it to be because we want to have, I'll show you on this one. We want it to have a little bit of a gape here for the pocket. So this pocket piece, you just have to bring it in a little bit just so it has a gape. That way, when it's all together, it doesn't buckle underneath it. So line this up nice and straight. I'm actually going to use my table here a little bit and that looks good. There's my center. Because if your circle isn't straight, it's gonna look all wonky when you're done. So, and then once you have the size done, go ahead and clip it all the way around Again, it's going to seem like it's a little bit longer here. Just bring it to match the edges. This fabric is just so adorable. As I said, it's kind of got a more creamy look to it because I used a black interfacing. Um, but I got it from Screenflower. Almost two years ago now, actually, this was a piece of scrap that I had. So I thought I'd use it up. Otherwise, I would have reinterfaced these ones with white. But I do not have enough fabric to do that. All right, so you can see there all together and it has a slight gap like that so we're going to go and base this around the outside with an eighth of an inch seam allowance okay so now I went ahead I actually have to redo this lining piece because always 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 check that you've cut it right because look it must have shrunk or I didn't cut it right so I have to redo this panel um, but so if it worked, it would have been great. This one's fine. I went ahead and did the slip pocket on the lining. Uh, it's exactly like the Erica Bowler bag. I do have a tutorial on that. Just make sure the placement markings or where you placement, you do it. That'll be different than the, uh, the pattern, but make the slip pocket the same and then uh, use the placement uh, measurements that are in the pattern to decide where you're going to put that slip pocket. And again, I have to redo my um, this panel. That's fine. We all make mistakes. It won't take very long. But um, yeah, I ended up not using the zipper placket. Mine was too long, my template, and I wrecked it trying to uh, trim it down. So I just went with my old reliable way of installing the zipper, uh, which I do have a tutorial on in my Bag Wakers 101 playlist if you want to check that out. The only difference is um, 
you won't leave the bottom open you'll sew it shut because this is a binding finish not a turning finish so the next step you do is you want to decide which part of the bag you want your slip pocket on and which you want your zipper pocket I like my zipper pocket to be on the back of the bag so that will go wrong sides together once I cut out a new one and do it and put it on the uh, wrong sides together on the back panel and for the slip pocket we can do this one right now so we're going to put the wrong sides together um, in the pattern she gives ways of trying to find the center it's one thing with working with the circle it's so easy to get it oblong or wonky or whatever I'm going to try with the way I did it where I marked those centers and I marked the centers on both so I'm just going to match up my center markings and clip it to that and I think it looks pretty straight and it all lines up fine here so clip it all the way around you'll do this with the other panel as well matching up all those raw edges that a circle is a hard shape to work with just because it's hard to tell what's right side up and all that and if you end up being just a little bit off on one thing you have a wonky looking bag so so once you get both of those panels clipped together wrong sides together what you want to do is make sure you fold the handle down and out of the way and then you're going to go along this outside and you're just going to base that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around so you have your panels together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm going to redo that uh, back lining panel uh, properly, cut it properly, that might really help me. And then we'll be back to start on the zipper. All right, so I've successfully, I said I'm still a little off on some of these, but it's within the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and it's all gonna get hidden by binding. So I'm not too worried about it. Still have that little bit of a give of a pocket there. And I fixed this one. I actually kind of cheated a little bit, but I don't think it's that noticeable. I just um, sewed on, you can't even tell. I, I sewed on another piece of material here and then cut the shape out. So this was the original panel here and then I just added some onto the bottom. You can kind of see up close, but do you know what? From far you can't and once it's in the lining, not gonna be able to tell by mistake at all. So it's all, good there's always workarounds for everything so you can put those two aside and now we are going to work on our uh, zipper panel again if you watch the erica bowler bag tutorial this is going to almost be very repetitive it, it goes together so the same way again it's just a different shape so i already went ahead and said it's my first time using the zipper tape we'll see how it is it's from blue cala it's kind of like i don't know it's kind of a cool rainbow Anyways, you want to put on your two poles. You want to try to get them together so there's not too much of a bump there. Now, it calls for a 13-inch zipper. I cut mine to 15, and the reason for that is I like to be able to pull my zippers out of the way while I work on the zipper panels. I did do a little back stitch at the end of these so my zipper pulls would not come off because I'm not one that can have the zipper tape and put the pulls on later. It does not work for me, so that's what I do. Okay, so um, another thing I like to use, you can use pins, of course, but I like to pull out my eighth of an inch um, uh, double-sided tape for this instead of using clips. It just works a lot better for me. So you wanna take a lining panel of your zipper panel and along the top of that, lay some tape down just along the top. Oops, come off. I said for, for uh, double-sided tape, I definitely recommend sizes to get um, eighth of an inch quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch. The three eighths of the inch is the ones I use the most, but the eighth and the quarter of the inch are sometimes really fun for, or easier for uh, putting on zippers. So you can see it's longer, so it's good because we can trim up the zipper later. So with the lining up and your zipper up, you're going to line up that edge 
with the zipper, just the raw edges. I actually don't want it to be exactly on. I want to be able to trim it. The pattern I think is cut almost to the perfect size. I just always go a little bit bigger. And we'll trim it up at the end of it all. Again, if you don't use the tape because it gums up your needle, you can also do this with um, with holding the clips down or get Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. That doesn't gum up the needle at all. It's really good. Okay, then you're going to take, you want to actually make sure, I didn't, make sure that these panels are somewhat the same size. And we're close. We're good enough. Then we're going to take the tape again and on the right side of this lining, of the um, exterior panel, you're going to put it right along the top. And then you want to line this up. It's going to go right sides together with the zipper and you want to line, make sure that it starts exactly where the lining fabric started. So you want them to be even like so. Oops. And then stick it down. Again, if it's a little bit longer on the one side, we can trim it up at the end, which I'm probably going to have to do because it's just a smidgen longer, so I'll end up trimming that off with the uh, zipper at the end. It's not a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to go, so it's got the zipper sandwiched in between the two panels. I am going to go and change out into my zipper foot and try to stitch this as close to 3 eighths of an inch as possible. I don't think with my zipper foot I can get that close. I get pretty close. So I'm going to go and do that and then we'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I verified my zipper foot is actually exactly 3 eighths of an inch, which is cool. So now we have that all stitched and now what you want to do is you kind of want to push and away from the main pad or the main uh, outer piece away from the zipper and finger press it. If you've used a cotton here, you can of course press it, but I think most people probably do vinyl. And then same with the lining piece. You want to pull them away. You want to pull them nice and taut together. This is where I like these to be out of the way because they just don't get in the way when it comes to top stitching or what have you. So um, I do like to just take before I top stitch it, just to clip it a little bit. I think this was the side that was a little longer, but that's okay. Just so I know it's pulled tight because I can't press it, so. that lining is away from the zipper. If it bunches up and gets caught, that would be bad. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to top stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way down here. So there you are. It is all top stitched and lovely. So now we're going to do the same with the other side. Start first with your tape. repeating what we did before. The only difference is we want to make sure everything is even with this panel. So right sides together and just making sure it's all lined up nicely here. It's 
also very important not to stretch the zipper, otherwise you'll have a wavy zipper. I've never worked with this zipper before, so hopefully I don't have that problem. M-line zippers are really good. I've never had to worry about wavy zippers with hers. These ones feel similar in quality, so I'm sure it'll be fine. I just love the variegated rainbow that's in this one. She had it with white tape as well, so you have to check, uh, go check that out. That's bluecala.com, I believe. She's located in Ontario. It lines up perfectly. See, the only thing that doesn't line up is where we went over with this, but we're going to trim that away in a little bit. And then take your exterior and do the same thing, lining it up with the ones that are even. Feeling the UPS guy is here, that's why Coco is barking while well, Benny's joining her. But I don't think Benny really knows what's going on because he's blind, and I think he just barks because she's barking. Okay, so I'm going to take that to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch them together with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, push the two panels wrong sides together, and top stitch. And then we'll come back to the next. Okay, so that is all done. And the zipper is nice and straight. Actually, the zipper tape is actually lovely. I really like it. Um, so the next thing to do is pull your, your zipper pulls into the center if you've done it the way I have. And trim the panels up nice and even. So this is where my pieces were a little bit too long, it looks like. And there we have it. So then the next step is to, and I already went ahead and did these. It's the same as any connector. So you take your connector pieces, you fold them into the center, and then you just top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on each side. So it looks like this. Take your D-ring. I like to take a little bit of tape. Where is my tape? Like so. Take the tape off, take your D-ring so the flat side is against the raw edges and then fold it over top of it like so. Okay. Okay, so now if you're doing the crossbody option like I am, you're going to skip over to page 25. If you're doing um, option B, which is the backpack version, I'm not doing that tutorial today. So. <laughs> um, okay, so you want to take these connectors, and I'm just going to use my table here a little bit. And we want to place them somewhat center with the zipper panel with about a half inch I'm going to put it here, it's about a half inch hangover. That looks pretty good to me. And just clip that into place. And then do the same on the other side. So I'm just kind of making my zipper in the center of this one inch square. And these are one inch. So now I can use my square to see where it's going to place and then it has to be about a half inch over so you see my table is my ruler okay so what we're going to do is we're not going to stitch all the way across we're just going to stitch across here Yes, we're going to base this over this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's also going to put a stop in on our zipper tape, so we know these won't come off at all. But yeah, an eighth of an inch, just the length, 
slightly over the length of this, so like not even an eighth of an inch past the connector on both sides. Okay, so you can see they're basted on there. Believe it or not, we are getting very close to being done. Closer and closer. Okay, so now what the next step is, is you want to take your gusset pieces. I'm just going to trim. Okay. So with the right, wrong, sorry, right, right side and right side of the exterior pieces, you want to put them together like so. And if you've gotten your seam right, they will match up perfectly like that. Click that in place first. And then at the same time, take your lining one. So you've got it clipped here. Take your lining one and put it right sides together with the lining fabric like this. Line it up and add it into the clips. And then take that over to the sewing machine and sew this all the way across with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So that is done. So now what you want to do is you want to push the wrong sides of the gusset exterior and the gusset lining wrong sides together. And then we're going to top stitch right along here. So there we have it all top stitch. Now what we want to do is pull this lining out of the way. And we want to rivet this connector for extra support. So you want to make sure the lining is pulled away from the panel. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Where I'm going to put my rivets. You want to make sure you're catching that connector and somewhat centered without catching that lining in there. And I'm going to do it right there. And I succeeded. You can see the hole went to there. And then it goes Miss Coco again. And Benny. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so I'm going to take that to the rivet press and I'm going to uh, set that in place. And then what you're going to do is you're going to repeat it again. So you are going to go right sides together this way and right sides together this way, like so. So we're forming a ring is what we're doing. And then 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, top stitch, and do the rivet again and then we'll come back with it. Okay, I will apologize now if you hear the crunching in the background. My sewing area is also where the dogs eat their supper and they are having it right now. And Coco is actually, she pushed her bowl right up to my feet so she wants to be super close. So I apologize if you can hear that, but they're my forever babies and they pretty much get what they want. Okay, so this is what we have. We pretty much have a big long circle. These aren't attached in any way. What I like to do quickly is just to go around these outside pieces and just baste these together so that I know that I'm going to catch them um, when we go to attach it to the rest of the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just go around and baste it all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides and then we'll come back. All right, so I just basted the lining and that together just so they weren't flopping everywhere and um, I know I'll be catching it all when I do sew it. Okay, now we're back to finding centers again. I mean, I can't, I can't specify enough how important it is to know where the centers are so you don't have an oblong bag. So, I think this one will be long enough. So what she's recommending doing on your zipper panel is finding the center top of your zipper panel. This is exactly, this is a 12 inch ruler, so it's exactly 12 inches. So from seam to seam. So what I'm gonna do is just put my ruler into where the seams are, like so. And I'm just gonna take my Chaco and mark that six inch mark right there. I'll do the same on the other side. 
That's exactly 12 and 6 inches. So they should be right across from each other pretty much. And I like using my clover chocolate because it just wipes clean, so it's easy. Um, I wonder how she and I slide your... Okay, so when we have that lying like that, we want to find our centers of the gusset, which should be right underneath it because we've got it folded in half exactly, I think. So 12. It's from there. That's one and a half. I'm just fold it in half exactly. Actually, if you go and you fold it right where those are now, in half like so, so I have it folded there. Now there will be our half marks there. I'm actually going to do snips because I don't trust my chalk. I guess another way to do it is if you did it different than the pattern and it actually works out exactly the same, but I think this is the way I do it going forward, is match up those two um, seams where we join these together. And you can see when I fold it, it gives us exactly where we made those chalk things. So I'm gonna do a little snip there, just a teeny tiny one. One on the other side. Yes, this works much better. I think this is the way I did it with my first one that I did in cork, so. So line up those seams there again. Fold the bottom and clip your centers. Just inside the seam allowance. So we got the centers of our gusset and of that. Okay. Now this is where we're gonna have to mark it again, I guess. So we knew these were exactly so we're pretty much four apart. Just under. I had marked my center already. There it is. I can still see my center that I marked right there. So I'm just going to transfer that to the top like, And I did a little snip. Oh, I was so smart. So I'm glad that we did that ahead of time. So I'm just going to do that little mark there. And then I have my mark there. We'll just make sure that they line up pretty much. Two and two, and they do. So I have my snip down here that we did earlier for the bottom center. And then we had done a little snip on top for this one as well. And same for this one. There's my mark right there. I'm going to just transfer it to the front so I can see it. And then I can still see my bottom one there. And I think that looks pretty straight. Again, if you get a little bit off, it'll throw the whole bag off. So and I think we're good. Okay, so now the moment of truth. And I have my cord all tangled up. One second. Got the extra long my cord, but I keep tying myself up with it now. Okay, so I am going to start with the front panel. I'm going to want to take that mark that we made on the top and match it with the mark. Actually, I like. I'm going to want to turn this. Inside out like that. Lay this down like this. And we're doing right sides together like this. So you're going to line up that center mark and clip it. I almost did it again. I did that with the air controller. Make sure you put your... Uh, handles down because you don't want to sew through them. Okay. So I'm going to clip the top and the bottom first, matching up those centers, hoping we have our measurements right. I said 
I do admit this bag is a little bit harder than the Erica Bowler bag and it's mainly just because of the shape. Just because it's so easy to get it off kilter. Okay, so now we're going to coop around distributing the fabric, hoping that we have everything cut to the right shape so the circle actually fits into the gusset because if it doesn't, I think I will cry. I would still post this video, but I would still cry. seems like it's a little bit tight you can go in, your, in the gusset you can just put like some little itty bitty snips just to help go around the curve like not even an eighth of an inch seam allows or seam cut that's the word I'm looking for just to help spread the fabric further see and it kind of slides in better Oh, I think we're gonna be lucky. I think the only piece I screwed up cutting was that lining piece. And I mean, we were able to get around that. The lining I'm not as fussy with because honestly, you don't really see it. It's really hard to see the imperfections because of um, it being inside the bag. Not that I like there to be imperfections, but when you're doing things handmade, it happens. So. Oh, look how perfect it's going on. This makes me happy. I was worried that I cut all my pieces wrong. Another thing to make sure is that you have the pocket going the right way. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, and we'll do the other side. Make sure little clips on this side because that definitely helps. I will tell you though, I prefer doing a circle bag over a round bottom. I am not good at round bottoms. I can do them, but they make me cry. It's going to be super cute. And I, I think my friend, I have a friend who loves all this, and I'm hoping that she wants this bag. So her style. We'll see. My circle is perfect. Look at it. Not even excess. I am so proud of myself. Again, this is my second one I've made. I made another one um, with the cork front pocket. So you can kind of see what that looks like on the inside there. It's looking pretty good. So now I believe we're going to go around with the quarter inch seam allowance. Just let me double check. Um, she recommends that you can also... Um, staple if you like uh, to hold everything in place i never have luck with staples and i always find some later on that didn't come out so i don't i find staples are more work than um, they need to be but that's just my opinion just if you're going to staple make sure you staple within the seam allowance um, and you got to make sure that the staples all lay flat so they don't uh, poke the vinyl um, Next piece of gusset to the main part. Oh, yes, I was right. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to lay this on my, my machine like this. Actually, I will move the camera into uh, the sewing room now, and then uh, you can watch me sew all these together. Okay, so I had to do quick, uh, a quick power charge of my phone. I only have 30% left on it now. Um, so I did go and sew this part on. You can see how awesome it looks. So now we are going to do the exact same thing with the other panel. Make sure your zipper is open and match those centers and clip around and then baste that again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm actually going to do this. I'm gonna put it into time-lapse so you can see 
it happen faster. But it's exact same as what we just did. Clip your uh, corners if you need to a little bit to help ease around the corners. And then um, the last step we're on to is the binding. Okay, so we have a circle. Look at it, it rolls. <laughs> um, at this point, you could turn it out to make sure everything looks good. I'm not going to because I know this is when I don't like to... Uh, I, I usually prefer to use foam because then I don't have to worry about the wrinkles when I turn out. But we use Decoville Heavy and Decoville Light. So I don't want to be stressing it out any more than I have to. I kind of go around the inside and just feel along the seam to make sure there's no holes. Make sure there's no tucks. And it feels fine to me. So now we are to the binding. Again, the binding is just like the Erica Bowler bag. It's nothing to be scared about. Um, just go slow. Um, you probably saw me during the time lapse. I held up my, my Bianis.com uh, stiletto, uh, a viewer or a subscriber uh, suggested using a stiletto when doing the corners and doing the binding. So I am going to use that today because I think it may save my fingers a little bit. Okay, so this is the binding I use. You can make your own. I'm honestly just too lazy. I just buy this uh, extra wide uh, double fold bias tape in all colors and always have it for when or if I need it. So it's, it's fairly inexpensive. This was $3.49 at Emmeline Bags. Canadian funds, of course, and a whole pack will do this whole bag. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to open up your binding comes like this. And it's folded in half, kind of like how we do our straps. It's folded in half and then into the center. So what we want to do is we actually want to open 
that first, we want to open it right out wide like this. And we want to take that raw edge there and we want to fold it in like so. Oh, I think I did almost an inch there. And then I got to remember how I like to do this. I'm going to do this. Just find a place to start. You're going to have this. I don't know if you can see it's really hard, dark in here because it's almost four o'clock. So um, take that folded edge and just find a place to start. Clip it. And then distribute it. All the way around like so. So you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm matching the raw edge of the folded out uh, bias tape and the raw edge of, I think I'm doing the front panel right now. If you notice some of it's really like way off here, just give it a quick trim down. It doesn't have to be pretty, just to even it out. You'll need it to be quite even when it comes to uh, when we fold it the other direction. So again, the hardest part is it just being a circle. Binding is not hard at all. If you're a quilter, you won't find this even a little bit intimidating. It's just a little bit uh, hard with the uh, thicker seams here because we're going through many layers here. Again, I am lucky and I have an industrial, so it goes through that no problem. But if you keep all the interfacings out of the seams, you should be fine. I'm pretty sure my Juki 2010Q, it may struggle a little bit with it, but I'd still manage to get through it. And then when we're, we're starting to come to the meeting. So what we want to do is we want to kind of keep carrying it on past where we started. So about two clips worth in, I guess, like that. And then you can take it and you can cut it. And put that aside for the next. So now what we're going to do is you can see, where are we here? This is where I stopped right here. This is where I started is right here. I'm going to start sewing just a little bit before where we stopped and we're going to go all the way around. Okay, she actually recommends using your zipper foot. I'm not going to change mine out. I think I'll be fine without it, but we're going to stitch it with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to do this in, um, time lapse because it's just soaring around a circle but it kind of gives you an idea what we're going to do and here we go
so I have the binding on there. I think next time I would probably do it this way rather than this way. Um, I don't know why I did it this way this time, but in the next round I'll do that. So now what you want to do is you want to take the binding and you want to fold it over. So you got your folded over edge here. So you want to make sure that's folded to the center so we don't have any raw edges. And then you're going to fold it over the raw edge like that. And then you're going to clip that in place. You're going to go around the whole bag and do it all the way around. Now, if you get to an area where it doesn't quite go over, just trim it down in that seam allowance so that it fits in will go over and cover that edge. That is allowed. So like this. All that's important is that those raw edges are completely concealed. So we're folding it up and over. Trimming if you need to. Right there is a little bit thick for me, so I'm just going to take, trim it down to about a quarter of an inch. Just because my tape doesn't want to go up and over for some reason. A little bit more. I must have went a little bit wider with my seam allowance there, which is okay. And over. Another thing I recommend is to use the same color thread as your binding because sometimes the binding stitches, I mean, they are hidden anyways, usually in the seam. You won't see them, but just in case they are visible, at least then you don't have to worry about them being seen because they match. Okay. You can trim the seam down a little bit if you got a little bit overzealous like I did. It's just important that that binding goes all the way over. And now it's just falling into place, which is nice. So that's the side that we already sewed, which is nice and perfect. So now it's just this side to seal off that binding. Okay, and then where we had folded that one piece under, you wanna make sure it gets folded under and goes under. We don't want any raw edges. So that's that seam where we started right there. There we go. So I have it. That raw edge on this side is concealed all the way around. So I'm going to go into time lapse again. And what you want to do is as close as you can to the edge of the bindings, so like within an eighth of an inch, maybe even a little less. You're just going to top stitch all the way around there. Well, you're going to sew it. I still use a, a sewing, uh, like a shorter stitch length to do this because I want it to be steady. So you just go all the way around there and it's going to solidify. This side is already done. You just need to solidify this side.
have it all sealed off on this side and all sealed off on that side, this side here. Go around, double check that you caught everything, that there's no raw edges sticking out. If you see any little strings, trim them away so they're not hanging into the center of the bag. And then we can do the binding on the other side. So I'm thinking the way I should have done it was place the binding this way so I could actually see what I'm doing. So that's what I'm going to do for this side here. I'm going to stick it on the gusset side. Let's try that and see if it's easier. So fold over the edge again. all the way around. And then I'm going to sew it down flat like this, pulling this aside and doing that. So I'm going to put this into time lapse and do that. And then we're to the point where we get to uh, turn the bag out. Okay, so doing, attaching the binding from the gusset was a lot easier that time. Um, I could actually see what I was sewing, which wasn't like sewing blind, which is the way I did it with the Erica Bowler bag. So I don't know why I didn't do it with this one, but yeah, definitely do that. And stiletto, amazing. Definitely have one for binding. It, it really does help a lot. So now the next step is turning it right side out. I think this is gonna be a workout, so I may go off camera to do this. So go ahead, turn your bag out, out and then I'll show you uh, what we got. Okay, after a little bit of struggling to turn her out, but I think that's just because the interfacing is so thick, she turned out so incredibly super cute. 
I do have the crossbody in the other room, but that's okay. Looks like we were centered, but yeah, there we go. I hope you guys enjoy making your circle bag. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, also, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. We're going fast. Hit the bell icon. So when I go live or when I have any other tutorials come up, you will be able to get notified of them. Thanks everybody for tuning in again. Bye.